Welcome to the 5.6 video, the last video for Chapter 5, which is on using inequality in, inequalities in two triangles. This section is very closely related to the last section. So the last section, we use two different inequality ideas. The first one is that the smallest sides in a triangle is located across from the smallest angle, and the largest side is located across from the largest angle. That's the idea that's going to continue into this section today. So we have one main objective. We're going to determine which side or angle is larger or smaller when considering two triangles with two pairs of congruent sides. So today's video really has to do with the hinge theorem. So the hinge theorem says when two triangles have two pairs of congruent sides, then the larger angle is located across from the larger side. Okay, so this time we're comparing two triangles. So let's draw ourselves two triangles. Okay, the hinge theorem only applies when these triangles have two pairs of congruent sides. So one pair, two pair. Now I can use the hinge theorem. So I'm going to mark my vertices. Okay, now the angles in between the two sides are going to be different. So let's say I have an angle that's 59 degrees and I have an angle that's 61 degrees. Whichever angle is larger, so 61 is larger, is located across from the larger side. So in this case we would say GO is larger than PS. So PS, smaller angle, so PS is going to be the smaller side. So that's mainly what the hinge theorem says. So looking at examples 1 through 4, this is how you're going to be using the hinge theorem. You're going to be comparing either two sides or two angles. So looking at example 1, first, does the hinge theorem apply? Well, I have one pair of congruent sides and a second pair of congruent sides. So ST is across from the bigger angle. So ST will be bigger then VW. VW is located across from the smaller angle, so VW will be smaller. Okay, looking at example two, hinge theorem again. I have one pair of congruent sides and a second pair of congruent sides. Now if I'm comparing angles one and two, angle one is located across from the bigger side. 61 is compared to 60. 61 is bigger, so angle one will also be bigger than angle two. Right now, I would like you to pause and try examples 3 and 4, please. Make sure that the hinge theorem applies before you attempt to use it. Okay, let's see how we did. For example 3, I have one pair of congruent sides. I also have EG as congruent to itself by the reflexive theorem, or the reflexive property. From the problem, we see that we are comparing DE to EF. I notice that DE is located across from the smaller angle, 98 compared to 100. 98 is smaller, so DE will be smaller than EF. 4. Does the hinge theorem apply? Well, I have the two sides of 18, and then I have this, the side in the middle by the reflexive property. I'm comparing angles 1 and 2. Angle 1 is located across from the larger side, 17 compared to 16. So angle 1 then will be larger than angle 2. Hopefully you got those right. If not, you will have a chance to practice more in the video and tomorrow in class. That's it for this page. If you want to move to the next page, please. Okay, so besides doing the hinge theorem just with plain greater than, less than, um, and with numbers, we're also going to have some algebra involved. So example 5 says, use the hinge theorem to describe the restrictions on x. Okay, so first of all, why does the hinge theorem apply? Well, I have this pair of congruent sides, and I have the reflexive property. That means I'm looking at my angle of 52 and x plus 18. Now, 52 is located across from the larger side. The side of 39 is greater than the side of 36. So my angle of 52 is going to be greater 
than x plus 18. Now, if I subtract 18, I'm going to get 36 is greater than x. So this tells me that x has to be less than 36. Well, can x be any value less than 36? Initially, you're probably going to say yes, but think about it. Can x be negative 100? If I plug in negative 100, that would give me a negative angle. So x can't be any number less than 36. I know that my angle also has to be at least 0. So my x plus 18, my angle, has to be at least 0. If I subtract 18, that gives me x is greater than negative 18. So my x is somewhere between negative 18 and 36. If I substitute it in negative 18, that would give me an angle of 0. That's why x has to be bigger than negative 18. And any value greater than 36 would make the hinge theorem not apply to this figure. Because remember, our x plus 18 has to be less than 52 based off of the larger side and smaller side. Okay, so all I did was here I applied the hinge theorem. Here I just applied the fact that our angle has to be greater than 0. So those are some more difficult problems that you're going to be doing in class. That is the end of this video for the most part. This video we learned about the hinge theorem. The hinge theorem applies to two triangles that have two pairs of congruent sides. The larger angle then between the two triangles will be located across from the larger angle. So we use that in examples 1 to 4 to determine which angle or side was larger. And then example 5 we used the hinge theorem to apply restrictions to an angle, restrictions to x. Right now you have two last examples that I would like you to do. So there's this example up here that's the objective example and the extra example. When you come to class tomorrow, I will be making sure that you have both examples done. If you do not do the extra example, you will not receive credit for the video. If you do a poor job on this example, you will not receive credit for the video. If you don't know how to do it or you get the problem wrong, that's okay. But at least show me that you will attempt the problem using the hinge theorem. This is very similar to example number five. Good luck and I will see you tomorrow.